In today's video, we are going to take a look at configuration as code in a CloudBees CI traditional environment. As a CloudBees CI administrator, you may have spent lots of time pointing and clicking around and setting up your controllers every time you have a new controller come online. By using configuration as code, this is made much simpler, not only because it's now as code and we can manage it under our source control systems, but I don't necessarily have to go back in and point and click and remember what did I do. By using configuration as code, that gives us the ability to track all the changes that are being applied to our controllers. And from that point, when we need to make a change for the controller, we change our configuration, apply it, and off we go. So in this video, we are going to start with an overview and understanding the documentation about how to set up configuration as code for a CloudBees CI traditional controller. Where we're going to start is actually on our operations center. The operations center is what houses all of the configuration files that we need for our controllers. As you can see here, we are running an operation center that's running version 2.277.4.3. And right now, when the operation center was configured, it was just installed using install suggested plugins. But afterwards, this may be different if you've watched some of my other videos, but afterwards, I installed a single plugin on the operation center. And that plugin is the Git plugin. And at the time of this recording, along with this version of the operation center, that Git plugin version is, we'll wait for it to wake up here. Oh, you know what? Probably won't that because that's used everywhere, isn't it? The Git plugin is 471. So the only thing that I had to do differently on the operation center is add in the Git plugin. Now, you may be asking, well, why the Git plugin? Let's go look at the documentation so you can understand why I did this. I'm starting at docs.cloudbees.com. I'm going to go to the CloudBees CI documentation, and then I am going to just verify, yes, I'm on the latest, which is in my case is 4.3. I'm going to go down to administering. And since we are working on traditional platforms, I'm going to expand traditional platforms. And then underneath is this section for configuration as code for controllers. Let's click on that. There is a very long page here. And in fact, if you look at this, 32 minute read, we're not gonna read this in 32 minutes. I'm just gonna point out a few of the items that we're gonna look at specifically in today's video. And as we work our way through the other videos that are gonna be coming up, we will just start looking at the sections that apply there. But for this video, what I did comes back to how does this work? And let's take a look at this picture. Our operation center is the house for all of the, what are defined as bundles to configure our controllers. So we see here a get bundle X for controller X, get bundle Y for controller Y. All of these things are just part of the configuration that has to exist on the operation center. All of the bundle files, when they are created, live inside of a local directory inside the Jenkins home directory of your operation center. Now, there are two different ways we can get those files into the location inside the Jenkins home directory. One is, well, I could just store the files on the operation center manually. I could SFTP them into the location or however I want to do it, just get the files copied up there. But the reason why I installed the Git plugin on the operation center was I want to be able to retrieve my files from an SCM. The basic process to do configuration as code follows these three steps. I sort of fast forwarded us into step two already by making the configuration bundle available. We are going to be using retrieving files from an SCM. In creating a configuration bundle, which we haven't gotten there yet, our choice is going to be ex export from an existing controller because do you want to write YAML by hand? Some people may want to, and after you've done this a few times, that may become your default way of creating your bundles. But for just starting out, we are going to create a client controller by hand, just like we've always done in the past, 
And then what we're going to do is go in, configure it the way that we want it, and then we are going to export those configuration files. So after we've made all of the configuration changes, we'll be able to export the bundles, and then we'll put them into source control. And finally, we'll be associating that bundle with the new controller that doesn't exist yet, but that bundle will configure the new controller. And we won't have to do anything by hand. Before we leave this video, I want to take you back over to the Operations Center and let you see where we're at and where we're going to pick up in the next video. So when we look at the Operations Center right now, the only thing that we've done to the Operations Center, other than install suggested plugins, we installed the Git plugin, which brought along a couple of other dependencies. And we have already connected a controller. Its name is CC1. And this controller is just normal. It went through install suggested plugins. We've not installed any other plugins. In the next video, we'll be going through installing the necessary plugins and starting to do our configurations to get us ready to produce the bundle that we're going to use to actually create a new controller that will be named CC2. So in this first video in this series, we've taken a look at our documentation for how to use configuration as code on a CloudBees CI traditional controller. We took a look at the Operations Center and we took a look at our controller that we have connected that doesn't really have anything yet. These are all just very vanilla basic installations. The only big change that we did was we installed the Git plugin on our Operations Center to prepare us to be able to pull our bundles from our source control. One final thing before we leave, I forgot one thing. In our Operations Center, I have already made one other change that is important, but may not be critical in your case. But I want to go ahead and call it out just in case you're not following completely along. What I've done is I've already set up our configured global security to allow us to use single sign-on. So if we take a look at configured global security and go down to client controller security, I changed it from do not enforce security settings on masters to single sign-on security realm and authorization strategy. So that way, when somebody logs in, it's the operation center that is managing both the authentication and the authorization for not only the operation center, but all of the connected controllers. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there is new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.